Good morning. Once upon a time, the Christmas ident would be introduced on Christmas Eve and then be taken off air on the 27th of December at the latest. But these days, it is a lot different. Most channels on terrestrial and satellite start their Christmas campaigns as soon as December is here and to tie in with the opening of the first window on your advent calendar. The early launch of festive presentation packages has led to many things such as recycling or acting like a big brand rather than a TV channel, hence I used the word campaign. And the notion of a campaign is best epitomised by BBC One, as for the last few years they have not just released new sets of idents, but rather a promo, in which the idents tend to be based around. And with this you can easily draw parallels with brands like John Lewis, who have become the most important part of Christmas TV in the UK these days. And BBC One also has a teaser trailer, giving us, the viewer, an idea of what the promo might be. The teaser trailer this year ended up being one of the idents within this year's package and the promo has the hashtag XmasLife and this is a technique which has also been done by John Lewis when promoting their advert. One problem with me discussing the promo in this video is that any footage of this year's BBC One promo will not feature in this due to copyright strikes as last year's video I made on last year's BBC One presentation was taken off completely earlier this year due to me having the clip in the video. So when discussing the promo I may talk over some random clips, maybe being idents or stills from this year's promo or maybe something completely random, so bear with that. This promo was due to debut on our screen alongside the idents before the Strictly Come Dancing results show, but instead we had to wait until after Strictly and before the fantastic drama His Dark Materials for the launch promo. And I was actually happy with one of the most important events for me in the calendar coinciding with something which appeals to more towards my viewing tastes. We actually saw the promo launched after we saw the first idents, something slightly different to what we have seen in previous years with the BBC One promo. And the first idents we saw was the cat on the Roomba, which made sense as Auntie had been teasing us with this. And then after seeing this first ident, we saw the promo followed by the next ident to introduce us into our fantastic Sunday night drama. After seeing the cat on the Roomba teaser on Twitter, I did not have high hopes for this year's promo with regard to it being good, though I was actually impressed after seeing it in full on TV. And I would describe it more akin to a promo for the channel rather than imitating a high street giant. And I would also describe this as a time capsule for 2019 with the use of hashtags and memes representing social media and the premise that the dad would not talk about politics whilst tucking into a vegan roast whilst the turkeys observe them and celebrate. What makes this very BBC would be the presence of the stars such as Graham Norton who kicked everything off in the promo. The nature of the promo has a Slade vibe to it, as it basically says, here it is, Merry Christmas, and look to the future now, it has only just begun. Especially with a take on the current mood. And with this, I think the BBC missed an opportunity by not using that 70s classic, or even using a cover of that song, as it is more Christmassy than the actual song which is in use. Which is a cover of a great song, which fits in well with the promo, yet the song is as detached from Christmas as it can be. The song used this year is a reworking of Gorilla's Feel Good Inc, which is covered by the choir Sun Voices. Though this problem is not exclusive to the BBC, as this also applies to Christmas adverts of this year and more recent years gone by. Feel Good Inc. is one of my favourite songs and I do really like this choir version 
of this indie banger. And this song fits in well with the promo, as the promo is about the feel-good nature, this being a feel-good nature surrounding Christmas. But I do have a problem with non-festive music being used in Christmas promos and adverts, as this song will start to be associated with Christmas. And for this reason, when January the 2nd comes, I would want to avoid this song at all costs, for a few months at least, as I would get bad vibes at the time when next Christmas seems as far away as it can be and all the fun is over for the time being, even though many of these songs are very jolly. As I find Christmas songs in the first week of January, when I am back to work after the holidays, very depressing, and I hope I do not get this feeling with Ario Speedwagon and Simple Minds, like I would Wizard, Slade or Band-Aid, due to their newfangled association with Christmas. Unless Argos does use Don't You Forget About Me as a replacement for the Fitz and the Tantrums track, which they have used in their adverts for the last five years. I have mentioned in some of my older videos that there is a problem related to using normal pop music in festive promotions with regards to adverts, especially as they tend to become Christmas songs due to their use in a certain commercial. However, I really like the promo, and I do believe that if the promo is good, that's all that matters, as there could be the other scenario that the Beeb uses a Christmassy song to accompany a promo which is very poor in quality. So here, the positive outweighs the negative by quite a bit. And this is what I felt last year with the Sainsbury's advert which used You Get What You Give by the New Radicals, which was miles better than the Christmas karaoke song from the year before, which used an original Christmas song made up exclusively for this advert. Overall, good promo, and I would say it is nearly as good as the one from 2017, but it is better than the one from 2018, due to its more upbeat nature in comparison to the last year's effort on Chroma Pier. Despite talking a lot about the promo, the main purpose of this video is to talk about the idents. I would say that these idents are neither the best nor the worst BBC One Christmas idents, yet they are festive. The first ident, as I have mentioned, was the cat on the Roomba, which kicked the whole campaign off, which is charming, but far from good, though I do like the clock ident, and the snowmen having the snowball fight on the wrapping paper is a pretty good ident. And this one is similar to the new safe ident, where the wrapping paper this time features mistletoe in place of the snowmen. But I am not much of a fan of a lying ident. Maybe the nature of these idents deal a blow for the system implemented these days by BBC One as even though the promo is good, you can't necessarily generate good idents out of them. Maybe in a similar vein that the balloon would not make a good promo. And this was a problem last year, as some of the idents, which again were based on the promo, like this year and even in 2017, did not fit in well with the festive nature, even though some of last year's idents were good, such as the tree ident, but the one on the dodgems, for example, felt like a regular oneness ident, and there was a daytime variant of the peer ident, and even though I was a fan of the nighttime peer ident, the daytime peer ident just looked like a regular clip, which could have been any time of the year, so it wasn't really Christmassy enough, if Christmassy at all. These idents also remind me of past Christmas BBC One idents, those being those from 2016, both with the use of lifestyle and also the use of wrapping paper, which was the basis of a 2013 look, especially as the logo on these two idents 
with featuring the wrapping paper has the logo in the middle a la 2006 which doesn't register well for me as BBC One Ident these days tend to have the channel logo at the bottom. But I could be here for hours talking about BBC One and the whole BBC Network's inconsistency with its branding. The best thing about these Idents is that they are festive. Sometimes though, simple Idents at Christmas are as good as anything, as this actually worked well with some of the 2016 Idents such as the one with the Christmas pudding and the bauble ident. And this is helping me appreciate this year's Christmas presentation a bit more due to the simplicity which works well today as it did in the distant past. And in some circumstances, I prefer the more old school technique to the lifestyle idents. Thus, I see that this year's idents are as good as some idents used in 2016 and 18 and in a better light compared to 2017's items based on the promo, albeit the promo from that year was really good. BBC Two has, not to my surprise, recycled last year's idents based on the curve, which still look good, and probably yet ironically prevent the channel from looking stale, especially with the modern tradition of launching on the 1st of December, as only using one new commission for the whole month would make the channel look stale and would have only worked 20 years ago when the Christmas Ident was only served its purpose for four days max. But we did get a wonderful tinsel Ident added to the festive set, and we may yet see more this year and in the next few years. I don't mind seeing Christmas Idents repeated every year as long as they are good Idents, and I have always felt this way with regards to BBC Two, especially during the second run of The Bladed Two. The contenders though for this year's best Christmas Ident would have to be a matchup between ITV and Channel 5. It has been an amazing year for ITV's presentation with their revolutionary ITV Creates campaign, where the channel has commissioned a fresh new ident every week by a different resident artist. The first Christmas ident launched on Sunday the 1st of December, instead of the following Monday, like all the other 40 odd idents. Ravi Deeper aside, due to New Year's Day falling on a Tuesday this year. And the first festive ITV Creates Ident is a brilliant effort, which features a reindeer with his antlers shaped as the ITV logo, which is extremely clever. It will be hard to review all of this year's ITV Christmas Idents, as by the time they have all been shown in full, the festivities will have finished. But from what I have seen as a sneak peek for the rest of the month, it all looks promising. This year has finally seen good idents on ITV since the days of the regions, which has been refreshing as to add insult to injury for me as someone who prefers regional ITV over this unified brand, despite it making sense in a business sense. The idents have been bland over the last 19 or so years. However, we have had decent festive efforts, especially in 2012 with their mechanical Christmas tree effort. And Christmas over the last five years in particularly has not been anything better. But with this amazing year, we can finally enjoy a good Christmas ident on ITV. And it looks like this project is playing at an advantage with the channel's Christmas branding as we can see something fantastic on Christmas and something very festive alongside some of the amazing efforts we have seen over the last 11 months. Over the last few years there has been a dark horse when it comes to contender for best Christmas ident and that has surprisingly been Channel 5 who have put out some great Christmas items over the years, and this year is no exception, as the channel have decided to play around with their logo and do something you would more likely see on Channel 4. The logo here is formed within a snowy festive setting and, and consists of ice rinks, which make up most of a sector 5, as well as trees and market stalls, 
which are placed around the main logo. This ident has a morning, afternoon and evening variant, which is usually commonplace in a Christmas ident. And even though there is no presence of a jingle or music to accompany this, there are background noises of what may happen at a Christmas market, which actually works really well. This ident reminds me of the 1993 BBC One Christmas ident and also the 2010 ident on the same channel based around a housing estate at Christmas. Yet I think that this Channel 5 ident of this year is better than the 2010 BBC One Christmas ident and is as good as the 1993 effort on Channel One. Hopefully, with regards to Channel 5's branding overall, this can encourage them to drop their current logo-less idents which don't go down well with me, and they can start commissioning a new set of idents where they play around with their logo in an old-school BBC2 or Channel 4 way, as this will work well. And by not doing this, Channel 5 is missing an open goal. Channel 4 will probably put up their decorations on the 20th of December, which is a more old-fashioned manner of doing things. Yet, with this being the modern way, they may repeat their items, which they have been doing for the last two years, which I also won't mind, as I still love the 80s-esque 2017 flashing lights effort. Overall, not a terrible year for Christmas idents. For me, BBC One's ident depends on the single ident, but for them, maybe the promo is more important, maybe to the detriment of some of their idents. Yet, I do like the clock one the best, but the promo is up there, as it is nearly as good as the 2017 promo, in my opinion, and is better than the 2018 promo, as this feels a bit more upbeat. BBC Two is still good, even if they are repetitive, but they have added another stellar ident to accompany last year's lot. Though ITV is my favourite for Christmas number one with strong competition from Channel 5. I am Tim Goodwin, over and out, wishing you to take care this Christmas and for peace in the new year. Mm -hmm.